Welcome to Franchise Marketing Radio, brought to you by SEO Samba, comprehensive high-performing marketing solutions for mature and emerging franchise brands. To supercharge your franchise marketing, go to seosamba.com. That's S-E-O-S-A-M-B-A dot com. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Adnan al Haider, and he is with Footprints Floors. Welcome. Hi, Lee. How are you? I am doing well. I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about Footprints Floors. Um, sure. Yep. Uh, first of all, thanks for, for having me. Um, so uh, Footprints Floors is a... Uh, it's a company. Um, it's a franchise um, um, based out of Denver. Um, I'm the owner in Metro Detroit. Um, it is a flooring. Uh, com- it's a flooring services company. So it's a, we're flooring installers mostly. Um, it's interesting. Um, we our business model is uh, a little unique. Um, we uh, focus more on being installers than supplying products. Uh, most of our competitors are just buying a product, marking it up and then selling it, uh, for a little profit. So the customer ends up paying a little more than uh, a lot of the times, a little more than buying it directly. Um, and, um, also that business model, um, forces, uh, uh, companies or, or contractors to have warehouses and or employees and just a lot of logistics back and forth, which increases overhead and they end up hiking up their, their labor prices as well. Um, so by us helping the customer get their own material when it's a finished material, um, we save on our overhead, we give better labor prices and the customer saves on labor and material. So what was what was your um, kind of backstory? How'd you get involved with them? Did you have another career prior to this? Yeah, yeah, I was in um, business management, HR and accounting, um, a little bit of both. Uh, that was uh, my right before this. I was a business manager at a engineering firm uh, in downtown Detroit. Uh, I was there for eight years. Prior to that. Uh, I did have uh, a little bit of experience in uh, just starting my own import expert uh, company for uh, three years or so. So what attracted you to this concept? Uh, well, there, there's a couple of things. Uh, the, the, you know, not to be mistaken with, you know, it, it doesn't take hours and hours to, to, to be uh, a, a business uh, owner. Um, it's definitely more work than being an employee. Um, but it's also as a business owner, uh, as we all know, you reap rewards, um, for yourself rather than, you know, working uh, 40, 50 hours and, and just getting a, a salary, right. Um, you're building something for yourself, for your family, something you can possibly even pass on to your kids. So, um, there, there was always, um, uh, and a, a strong interest, um, to just have my own, have my own business, uh, and I was uh, always looking for um, opportunities. It wasn't always in the construction industry. I, I was thinking the restaurant industry for a while, you know, I, I, so many other things. So um, what really attracted me to, to Footprints Floors, even though I, I kind of stumbled um, into it, it with, you know, searching for, for something, I, I ran into um, Footprints Floors and, um, it was a coincidence in the beginning, but as I, as I went through the education process to just really understand what they do, um, there's, you know, like I told you, there's a couple of things that I, that I felt that they were doing right, um, uh, in an industry where, um, people really, really, um, look for professionalism because there's a lack of it, so to speak, um, it's it's footprints i think is one of the companies that's that's really changing that um uh, you know i've been doing this for two years and i can't count the number of times people have told me after the fact you know after everything was done after the job was done is that you know we were we were scared you know we've heard this we've heard that you know they've had their own horror stories um and then having 
a company come that they feel that we care. Um, we're not only there to be in and out, make a couple hundred bucks and leave. Um, we actually care. We respect their homes because, you know, the thing is when you're doing, you know, services in people's homes, I mean, what a lot of people fail to to realize is, is, you know, this is someone's sacred place. This is someone's, this is someone's home. Right. Um, so the, the, the slightest, slightest thing that you, you know, we might not think of it's to them, it, it, it can be perceived as disrespect or, um, or disrespect to their prop, uh, private, uh, life or whatnot. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that th- those are one of the things. The other thing is I think is the one other really factor that really um, helped me make the decision was the just the culture at corporate. Um, I felt there was a very strong, uh, uh, close family-like connection, um, and uh, it just felt right. Now, when you're for the people who are c- contemplating getting a franchise or going into business for themselves, can you walk me through kind of the fire hose of information you had to wade through to even get to the point of narrowing it down to a handful before you chose Footprints Floors? Because, like you said, you started your own thing, you worked, you know, for somebody else, and then you said, "You look, I'm going to do a franchise." Um, can you kind of help our other people who are potential franchisees understand kind of your path, how you were able to, you know, find this, which seeming is like a needle in the haystack. Cause there's so many brands out there. There's so many choices and I don't even know how you would even begin a search to like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have said, Oh, let me look up footprints floors. You would have gone down some other path um, did you have help? How did you kind of, you know, once you made the decision, okay, I'm going to consider a franchise, how did you then narrow it down to eventually whittle it down to just Footprints Floors? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good question because actually I um, initially was not thinking of franchise. Um, um, I didn't want to go through a um, uh a consultant because I just felt that they, you know, they're making money selling me it. Right. So they're going to sell you what's in their portfolio. Right. So they, they you know, they're, they're, you know, their job is done and they make their money once I sign that contract. Right. They're gone. <laughs> so, you know, that, that to me, that was a little, uh, that, that was a little scary. I would say. But you so knew I, enough I, to know that most people don't know that. Yeah. So, um, so I was actually looking to either start something on my own or acquire a business that's already running. So acquire so, an existing business, whether it's a franchise or not. It was just somebody else had already been kind of had it going. Correct. Correct. It's, it's, the idea is is it, it just like just like why some people go into into or purchasing into a franchise is because someone has already done the 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 startup you know the startup costs the the learning the market you know someone's already done all that so you know it, it, similarly with a franchise and a business that's already running you just buy it um you know it kind of achieves that series so I, I wasn't really strictly looking actually I was not actually looking into going into a franchise um and like I told you I stumbled upon footprints floors and I think throughout in the my education my process of just going back and forth with them and really understanding it, it took some time. It took, it took roughly five months of just going back and forth. It was just like weekly meetings um, and they would send me things. I would read over them. Um, I read that FDD several times over. <laughs> um, so it, it, I, I think. Did you talk to other franchisees? Yes, yes, they do. They do allow that, and I, I've talked to, to several of them before. Before, um, how important joining. was that part of it? Well, I think that's very important. It, it, it's that's that's extremely important because it, 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 talking to someone that just recently, or whether whether it's five years ago or, or two years ago, um, talking to someone that's going through it. Is it's it's going to be different than talking to a corporate employee or the owner that that built it from scratch, right? That person, the, the owner, um, as as someone who he's been doing this for probably 10, 15, 20 years, right? You know, 
they at, at this point <laughs> maybe have for, even forgotten certain things or how they were, you know, at the early stages, you know, you know, when you, when you're running as a corporate is, is not when, like when you're starting your own business. Right. So talking to a franchisee um, to me, it was very, very important, especially that they actually allowed me to, to, to contact them uh, as long as the other franchisees were, were okay with it to contact them privately. It didn't have to necessarily be on the weekly or biweekly, you know, meetings that they would set up for us. Um, we, we can exchange numbers and, and, and talk about it any other time. So it's not like they were watching them or telling them what to do, what to say. Um, I just felt we were having genuine conversations and very honest con- conversations that were actually encouraged. They, they encouraged us to do that um, and talk to the franchisees. So um, to me, that, that's, that was extremely important. Now, um, when you talk to them, that made you feel comfortable, obviously, of going in this direction. But had you narrowed it down to other choices? Like, did you like? How did it begin? Did, was it a Google search, or you just found them? Just some a friend of yours used one of their services. Like, how did they even so, get on your radar? So they got on my radar because I was I was doing a lot of online searches uh, to to buy an existing business. So I was look. I was I was in contact with like brokers that were selling existing business and stuff like that. And, and because of my searches, it popped up on my, uh, I, I can't remember, Facebook or, or Google or, or something. Right. So they know you're searching for a business. So they said, hey, th- consider us as a business. To buy. And, right. and yeah. And, and to me, um, I wasn't strictly looking. I was not looking for something in the, in the, in, in the construction industry at that time. Uh, right. Your background so, wasn't in this. I mean, maybe you're yeah. a good at that, but that wasn't your kind of career. At- correct. Correct. And, 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 and the whole, and then I looked at it and, and the application was, 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 I was like half a page. It was like five questions. So I was like, you know what, eh, it's just five questions, whatever, just do it. Right. And then, and then they contacted me and they were like, Oh, you have 15 minutes to go over this. And Hey, you're checking these boxes. Are you interested in learning and in, in learning more? And I, I said, yeah, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for, you know, I'm at a point where I'm, I'm, I'm searching for, I'm searching for a business to, uh, uh, you know, purchase or start something. So I'm open to the idea. It wasn't, it wasn't my number one thing. I wasn't strictly, or I wasn't even looking for to, to get into franchising. Some of the, some of the businesses I was looking to buy are actually franchise um, locations, right? So, uh, I wasn't completely against it, but I wasn't looking for it. Um, and like I told you, within, you know, within the first um, couple of weeks, you know, that, it was just very general information at that point. Um, it started to, to, to seem like, hey, you know, this, this, this is making sense. You know, they, they are coming with something new uh, in the industry as far as like the business model. And um, it, it, it seems like there's a need for, 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 for this kind of company, right? There's, there's a lot of customers that are just scared to do anything in their houses, scared to bring someone in and give them a check for 25, 50% of the, the, the project. And then they would never show up again. And that's happened to hundreds. Of yeah. Times. Everybody has a horror story from that standpoint. Yeah. And so the mission really resonated with you and the way that they were doing business and treating you resonated with you. And then that gave you the confidence to kind of keep pursuing this. Correct. Correct. And then when you did kind of pull the trigger, was this something that you were like, whew, I figured this out or were you like kind of still nervous? Like, I hope this works. So there, there was, de- so when you, when, when I pulled the trigger, signed the contract there, you know, I, I had a very good idea, but there, there was still a lot of questions mark. Right. Um, you know, uh, and, and that's the other thing is that when when in reviewing the the FDD and, and I had a, a obviously an attorney also look at it. And this was a the big attorney that represents one of the biggest franchise companies in in the U.S. and he's been doing this for twenty five years and um he said if 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 they're if they're going to actually follow through and give you the training that they list on this fdd he's like this would be the most robust training i've ever seen for any franchise company right um and i kid you not i mean it was two two we went i went through and this is back in, in, in two years ago so i went through um 
two weeks of training, came back, launched, and then I went back for one one more week of training. And those three weeks, I, I think, gave me a, a 10 to 15 year head start in the industry. Um, I, you know, a month or two into this, we're running into sanding and refinishing problems with some of my crews that have been doing this for over 20 years. And and they're puzzled, not knowing what to do. And I already had the answer. Um, so that that initial training is, is really good. And um, it's a lot to absorb. Um, but uh, it, it, it's definitely, definitely, um, you know, after I, I would say after that training, I, I think I gained a complete confidence and obviously learning and training doesn't stop. So we, we you know, through franchise, we have weekly and monthly trainings and um we're in continuous contact with reps from all companies so we know you know the latest products out there you know that just that does never stops obviously but um i would say that that first three, those first three weeks of training are, are very crucial after that i, I think I'm, i was very confident in, in what i'm doing so now when you started, did you just buy one territory or were, was your vision to um, kind of build an empire in your market? So the, the vision was to, was to go big. I started with two territories and I'm at four now. And that it's been by design or has a, is that, so you always had a vision that, Hey, if I'm going to do this, I'm going, I'm putting a lot of chips in the table here. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then so that, that was the idea from the beginning. I just, didn't have the capital to, to right to do the right, right to add the additional at at the yeah. at the beginning, but so when was the when did you first kind of get a clue like hey this is going to work out like how how far in there were you when you were like okay I'll I'll be okay. Uh like were you was it right at, at go when you launched were you like oh man this is going to no, be great no, or was I, it I like I, I literally launched like with COVID. So uh, uh, I, I literally launched Monday and then Tuesday, and this is March of 2020. And oh, Tuesday, so you were right at the yeah, Michigan. Yeah. Michigan went on shutdown. <laughs> right. You know, on essential. That was like my, literally my second day in the business. Um, but, uh, you know, the first, I would say the first month to six weeks were, were kind of slow. Um, but after that it picked up and it picked up quick. I would say, I would say after my third or fourth month, I, I had that moment like, Hey, this is working. So then that was a relief and then you were excited. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> uh, I mean, with COVID starting, you know, with COVID hitting right, right. When I started, I, I thought I was going to be at home for six months at least doing nothing. So. Right. And then, so when you um, hit that kind of tipping point in your mind, is that when you started going, okay, what are the other markets that are available? Is that, or did you wait until you got kind of the cash flow that you needed to pull that trigger? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it took, uh, I think like uh, seven, uh, seven or eight months for, for, for me to, uh, like I told you, like within three to four months, I was like, this is going to, this is working. And my plan was, Hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I want to see if I can keep this pace Um for at least you know five six months and if i can then i would be ready to bring on an employee and go for another territory now um, and, was the so you were able to get a, the flow of clients that was the that was what was um making you feel confident that you had an, enough clients that it's like hey this is like i can't turn this faucet off now even if i wanted to um we de- I definitely got to that point um, in in the summer of 2020. Yeah, so my first, you know, just a few months in, definitely got to that point. And it was like, hey, if if this if 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 I can handle this and continue this and start to slowly scale and grow from here, um, it 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 was it was it was it was two things. It was kind of like just for peace of mind, if, if this, if I can keep this average of, of customers or revenue, however you want to look at it um, for, for four to five, six months, um, then I'm financially capable of bringing on an employee. I'm financially capable of growing into another territory. And it was also at the same time, it was, if this also continues, I'm not going to be able to handle this on my own in a couple of months. And, um, I, I would say those six months I was, I was working 
uh, at least 10 hours a day. Um, I was working almost every single weekend part-time-ish. So were you uh, doing the install or you always had a crew doing that work? No, no. So I, no, no, I always had crews. I mean, the, the, the way the model works is, is you, you, you have crews, you, you, you subcontract. And that's not a challenge or they have systems in place to help you vet the right crew and to help them, you know, do what they need to do. Uh, it's, 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 it is a challenge, um, but it's not rocket science. Um, they, they have the system uh, to guide us through finding, uh, vetting, uh, crews, picking crews, and then the, the crews that we, we like to, and we want to keep also, um, you know, teaching them more. Um, right. Because there's, cause th- this is where the, you know, the rubber hits the road. They're the ones in the house. They're the ones that are uh, leaving that impression with that owner that was so important to you at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So there's, there's definitely, yeah, there's definitely, uh, they definitely help us and train us in, in finding um, vetting uh, and, and continue to training these, these crews. Because the customer at the end of the day, if, if something happens, they're going to you, that crew could be gone. Uh, but you're the one that's the, kind of the the person they're going to yell at. Correct, correct. So it, actually, in, 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 with with our business model, we don't we're never going to leave the the customer. We, we the owner, myself, or production managers will always be the main point of contact. Right. So we're involved in the process. You know, from from the day we show up to give an estimate to the day we close the job. Um, uh, definitely the cruise is a huge thing, right? Because they're, you know, and, and we tell them this and then the crews that, that work with us and rely on us, they, they, they like it. And um, because they don't have to deal with the customer as much, that's not their strong point. Um, we're, we're having professional um, project managers dealing with the customer. So, and, and then it's, and then we're managing the crew and, and all the issues that can come up with um Right, so everybody's kind of staying in their lane. Correct, yeah. Well, congratulations on all the success. I mean, to get to four territories that quickly, and especially through the pandemic, is you should be very proud of yourself. That's a big achievement. Thank you. So if somebody wants to learn more about Footprints Floors, um, what's the best way to get a hold of you in Detroit, or just uh, if they're interested in the franchise, to get a hold of them directly? Um, probably best thing is, is go directly with the franchise, go to footprintsfloors.com. Um, and, and, and there's a link on there. So, you know, that's probably the best way. And, uh, uh, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty, you know, I, I, I went through this myself. So I, there, there's a million questions that pop up and everyone's like, how does this, that work? How does that work? You know, um, how am I going to find crews? How am I going to find customers? It, 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 and that's the beauty of, of, of um, purchasing into into a franchise is that all that is already set for you, right? Um, there's a there's a roadmap that not one or two people. There's tens uh, of people that went through it, and hey, if you follow it, it works. Yeah, I mean, you're proof of that. Good job, man! Congratulations again, and thank you so much for sharing your story. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you next time on Franchise Marketing Radio. 